Uh, welcome everyone to the 2021 Holkins Foundation, the Because Project uh, Renewal B Grant webinar. Uh, for those of you who had joined a little early, thank you for your patience and listening to us as we got situated. Um, just wanted to make sure everything was in order before we got going. So I am Stephanie Porto. I am the Programs and Operations Manager with Holkins Foundation, and I am joined by um, Tristana Perkle, our education, edible education leader with Whole Kids and the program manager from the Because Project, um, Megan Swanson. You'll be hearing from her in just a little while. And then Tristana will be here to support with answering questions uh, that you all submit to the control panel. So just a couple of housekeep housekeeping items as we get started. There should be in your uh, control panel of your Zoom, both a chat and a Q&A. Any questions that you have related to the grant or to the, the content that we're covering or anything like that, please submit to the Q&A uh, piece of the control panel rather than the chat. Feel free to comment in the chat or to share in the chat or to um, you know submit other things, but for those questions that you really want um, an answer to, please put those in the Q&A. We have some resources that we will mention throughout the course of the webinar, um, all of which you can find on the Because website, uh, some of them on our website, but we will also share some of those as well through the email that we send out after the webinar. And then finally, this webinar is being recorded. It'll be shared in the email as well, and you can also find a recording of it on both our website and the Because website as well. So our agenda for today, I already did introductions a little bit, but I'll briefly speak about Whole Kids Foundation um, and Megan will introduce herself. And then we will discuss the eligibility for the renewal grant. We will talk about um, the elements of getting started with your B program, no matter what stage you're at in the process. Uh, Megan will share about many of the resources that are available from the Because website. Uh, as it relates to bee and pollinator education and programming, whether you have live bees or not. She'll share a bit about their fundraising program called the Pay It Forward program. And then we'll talk specifically about the timeline and logistics of the application process and how you apply in our online grant management system uh, that is managed by Whole Kids. Uh, so we'll walk you through what that looks like. Many of you will be familiar with that since this is a renewal bee grant, but always helpful to have a refresher and for those of you who aren't uh, it'll be new material so just briefly whole kids foundation the because project work together on our b grant both our traditional b grant and our renewal b grant uh, but whole kids foundation has a number of other programs uh, by which we support schools and organizations that serve k through 12 grade range uh, we have school food support programs, a salad bar grant program, we have our garden grant program, and then we also have a uh, three hour health and wellness education program for teachers and food service staff that work in K through 12 schools. So it's not a grant, but uh, another one of our core programs that um, is really great for those that are working in these environments. So I'm gonna pass it over to Megan to tell you a little bit about the bee cause. Thank you, Megan. Hey everyone, um, like Stephanie said, I'm Megan Swanson. I'm the programs manager at the bee cause and I'm seeing a lot of familiar names on the list here. Hi, Ron. Um, so I'm excited to see everyone show up and get ready to learn more about the renewal grant. As a lot of you guys know, the bee cause project, we focus on providing youth with opportunities to understand, engage, and learn from bees and other pollinators in order to connect with their natural environment. We're all about the STEAM skills and trying to meet you where you are. Um, the Whole Kids Foundation has adjusted with us throughout this year, and we're really excited to offer the renewal grant opportunity. We wanted to meet all educators, whether you're working in a community or a classroom, make sure those K through 12 students are really able to take advantage of the B programs, whether it's digital or in person, since we've all had to adapt our learning environments this year. So we're really, really happy that the Whole Kids Foundation is 
ready to ride this roller coaster of a year with us and create a great grant program. And then, so the eligibility. Um, a lot of you guys, if you are on this webinar, um, the eligibility, the most basic principle of it, you need to be a past B grant recipient. So this means that you have received a B grant from the Whole Kids Foundation, B Cause Project, B Grant Program in the past. This is meant to boost and build momentum off of those programs and help everyone get through this year that we're going through and grow your programs outdoors, however you see fit. Um, the K through 12 school or nonprofit that still stands and you need to have an intention to restart or, ex or expand your B program. So that intention is still there. You are not required to have live bees to apply for the renewal grant, but of course the ultimate goal is to always welcome our buzzworthy partners onto your campus or into your community. The B program through any of those resources used with the renewal grant, they do still need to be used as an educational tool. So a quick poll from everyone who is on this webinar, um, does your B program currently have live bees? And you can answer that in the um, chat section. And it is not a bad thing if you don't if you don't have live bees at the moment. I don't have live bees at my house at the moment, so we would have something in common already. Um, but it's really encouraging to see how many people actually do. They're carrying on their live bees. I know this year has posed a lot of um, challenges to that. So kudos to you guys for riding this wave and really standing by the bees and figuring out different solutions. Um, we've been chatting with a lot of different programs about how they've adapted their program. So that's really exciting. Awesome. And in Vancouver. Wow. Maybe some chili bees soon. <laughs> Alrighty. So off of that, our focus, the Whole Kids Foundation and the Bee Cause Project this year is really focused through this renewal grant on how to grow your bee program. And what we're looking at right now is our little food pyramid of how you can grow a very strong bee program. A lot of you, if you're here today and you do have live bees, you know what it takes. And if you don't have them right now, you also probably know what it takes to keep a program like this going. It comes with a lot of challenges, but so many more rewards. And like I said, what we're looking at is really a depiction of how the Bee Cause Project and Whole Kids Foundation has decided to display to everyone that this is the best way to grow your bee program. We've spoken with so many people, like one of our um, participants today, Ron, and they're out in Washington about how to properly grow a really strong bee program. And that really starts with building that buzzworthy foundation. Then you can grow a bee club, connect with community professionals, expand habitat if that's possible in your school or nonprofit and then welcoming the live bees. So there are several ways to incorporate bee programming into your community or classroom. And today the renewal grant will help with all of those different levels of engagement. So what the renewal grant is at its core is it's valued at $1,000. There is a $500 monetary supplement and then the Bee Cause Project will provide one-on-one -on -one program consultation. So we'll have scheduled time with you and whoever in your school or organization would like to meet with us to really help you build that program, whether it's helping with fundraising or you really need help implementing the curriculum. The Bee Cause Project has beekeepers on staff. Our curriculum specialist, Emily Ellingberg, is on the webinar today. So we're really here to help you and meet you wherever you are. That's what that one-on-one -on -one program consultation is. And then the educator resource pack, which I am extremely excited about, it is going to be something that you will receive in the mail. It will have digital components and physical components of curriculum. We've partnered with organizations like the Pollinator Partnership to provide some of their curriculum as well. 
All of this will be mapped to the core. It will have educator guides, the next generation science standards mapped as well to specific resources um, and supplements for your students. So these resources will be ready to go. We will have webinars after those materials are delivered in early February so that you know exactly where to plug and play these webinars and customize them to your own classroom, whatever that's looking like right now. Alrighty, so the general costs, these have not changed much over the years aside from the cost of fees. I know that that fluctuates depending upon the year and where you are in the country. Sometimes it's a little bit more expensive to purchase the bees, but just up front, a few suggestions that we would say that $500 monetary supplement could go towards is saving towards or keeping $150 aside in case you have a swarm or something happens to your current hive, sugar for off-season feeding, monthly beekeeping services, if you're building an outdoor area so that students can still take advantage of those learning opportunities through a bee club um, due to COVID restrictions, et cetera. Um, those are some suggestions that we have um, or buying bee suits, the buying the bee suits for the kiddos to really get engaged outside. Those are a couple of the general costs. And again, like Stephanie mentioned, we'll, there will be a recording of all of this going out afterwards. So you don't have to worry, these costs will be recorded on there for you. And continuing that conversation about how to keep these programs moving forward and keeping them really strong, the Bee Cause Project partners with the Savannah Bee Company to do a pay it forward fundraiser. A lot of you guys might already know about this fundraiser or you've participated before. Um, I know I've placed honey orders for a couple of the attendees today, so thank you. Um, but what the Pay It Forward or fundraiser is, is you can purchase honey. There's no cost to you. You let us know how many jars you need. We send them to you, again, no shipping. And then $10 of that gets paid back to the Bee Cause so we can pay it forward to a new program and your program keeps $5 of every jar sold. So that is a way to keep that nice little emergency fund for your bee program or to raise funds to expand the program for any of those costs that need addressing. We will include all of the details about the Pay It Forward fundraising program in the follow-up email. If you wanna download that PDF, um, the detail sheet, it's on the resources page of the Bee Cause website. Alrighty, so down to the fun part. Um, the application has already opened. It has been a busy past couple of weeks, so we definitely want to help you however, whatever questions you may have in the meantime on this webinar or our next Q&A webinar. The application deadline is December 15th. We'll notify everyone by January 15th. And then the really important date after notification is you need to accept your grant by January 30th. After that, we'll be off to the races and you will receive your grant materials, the check and the educator box in the mail by the first week of February. All right, and like I mentioned, the application is currently open. So you can go to the wholekidsfoundation.org in their program section, the Honeybee Hive grant page. So the B grant page is where the application will live it's also where a lot of the other details are about the grant that we're discussing today. So that's a great spot to begin if you haven't already. And our previous webinar that we did last month it was all about our new resources. So if you weren't on that webinar, we have a plethora of back to school with the bees resources. Like I mentioned earlier in that food pyramid of building your bee program, that bottom layer of building a buzzworthy foundation with your curriculum, that's really what we discussed in the last webinar. You can watch the entire webinar, entire webinar recording if you would like. And then we also have a blog post on the Bee Cause website that has a video detailing where to find all of these resources, et cetera. If you have any questions about those lesson plans, you can email us at info at 
or you can go straight to the six week B unit page and play around with a few of our favorite resources. Alrighty. So like I mentioned, the decision will be on January 15th. That's when everyone will receive, regardless if you received the renewal grant or not, you'll, you will be notified on that day. Um, you'll just need to sign that grant agreement and then we'll ship everything out the first week of February. If you are on hold, um, you might be familiar with this in the past of doing one of the B grant webinars that we've done. The hold list just allows us, if we have any conti and continued sponsors or someone steps forward locally that they would like to sponsor your grant, we definitely try to work with everyone to make sure that everyone who is eligible and applies and has a strong program can definitely still have an opportunity to have their grant fulfilled. All right. so. I will hand it off to Stephanie. She'll go through the application process and I'll be in the chat and in the Q&A section with Tristana answering everyone's questions. Thank you. Steph, you're muted. I can try and I got it, I think. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the technical aspects of submitting your application online. Uh, as I mentioned before, some of you may be familiar with this having done it more recently. Some of you may not be familiar with this at all and that's okay. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit at least to get you started. And then I want you to know you can always reach out to us at grants at wholekidsfoundation.org. Um, Related to this process, um, we have two fantastic interns that um, manage that communication and will be more than happy to support you. So to get started, as Megan mentioned, if you haven't already done this, you can access the grant management system by going to the Whole Kids Foundation website. And in the grants page, um, you'll find the B grant page, you will find a very obvious apply here button. So you'll see that it's one of the first things on the B grant page, big green button, you can access the site that way. And what you'll end up seeing is this, this is the login page for Smart Simple, that is the system. Um, for those of you who have done this more recently, you will be uh, a returning applicant in the sense that you will have a login that was the email address that you utilized to register the previous time when you submitted your B grant and a password that you may or may not remember. Um, if you don't remember the password, you can utilize the forgot password function, um, assuming you still know what email address is associated with your account and you can and access that way. Um, for those of you who may have received a B grant in further further back, um, you know, 2015, 2016, maybe even 2017, before we utilize this system, um, your process may be a little bit different. If you know what email address is associated with the grant application, uh, if you know you were the primary contact on that grant, ap grant application and your email has not changed, you can still, um, go about this in the same way. You can still utilize the forgot password function because you'll have that information. Um, if you do not know, or somebody else that worked in your school or organization was the one that had applied and received, applied for and received the previous B grant, uh, please just reach out to us, grants at wholekidsfoundation.org, and we will get that information for you. We'll update it for you. We'll get you an updated login. Uh, and a password that you can then change once you um, sign in. I think that's probably the easiest way uh, for y'all to go about that. Once you sign in, everyone's homepage will look the same. Um, some key things to note here that are important. Um, you can disregard this register new organization piece, but if you are, Working from a school or an organization that may have sub submitted multiple grant applications, perhaps on behalf of multiple different organizations, you may have multiple organizations um, 
assigned to your account. So you'll just want to take note of this here. That's how you will toggle between them. That's probably going to be a select few of you. Um, but you'll know then that you're in the one for which you want to apply by, by seeing here um, who you are currently logged in as. Any of your contact information uh, that you want to update or change, you'll want to go here. So that'll be the information associated with you as an individual, uh, not the organization or school that you are applying on behalf of. So if you wanted to change your email address or um, your the name of the primary contact, your phone number, uh, you could change your password here, I believe, but you also have a change password button. Um, this will be key for those of you who connect with us at Whole Kids to get you access to your account. Uh, we'll provide you with a default password. And so of course you'll want to update that once you sign in um, so that everything is secure and it's something easy for you to remember. And then the fun part are the funding opportunities. It'll be real obvious here on your homepage. There'll be a panel that'll tell you the grant opportunities uh, for you. The Renewal B grant application should be here. Uh, you will click on the apply now button. Over here, you'll see uh, your past application. So whether that was just a B grant or B grant, perhaps a garden grant, this submitted was suggest you just submitted it, but finalized is where you'll see your past B grant application. Um, having already had that approved and been received by you all, that will live here. And then over here, you will go and you will open the renewal B grant application. And this is set up to do a couple of checks in the system. So uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you experience any sort of um, you know, challenge with this. If you get a, an error message or some sort of note that is telling you you cannot open a B grant application for any reason, um, we have it set up pretty cleanly. But uh, since they are systems, sometimes they, they do funny things. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions about that. Uh, but you should experience no issues. You just click on it and it'll open up for you. If you're curious about some of the um, eligibility requirements as it relates to previous documentation. So having received a B grant in the past, you would have been asked for a progress report about a year after you received the B grant. Um, it is a requirement that you have submitted it uh, if you are a more recent recipient, you'll be able to find that information here. If for any reason you wanted to reference it, you'll see that in your homepage. And then when we sent communication out earlier this year about this opportunity, we had also sent to y'all uh, a link to a survey. It was pretty short um, to complete, which was also an eligibility requirement. And you'll be able to see that here as well. If you wanted to see how you submitted it, or if perhaps you haven't completed it yet, um, you won't be able to access it here, but that'll at least give you an indication of maybe why you receive an error message. So you can email us and we can get you, get you going with that as well. So then the application is pretty straightforward. We're not gonna go through the entire thing. Um, some of the key pieces that I do like to share and talk about just because I think it helps in terms of clarity is this first piece of the application as it relates to a fiscal sponsor for your school or organization. So this is optional. It is not required. Your school or organization does not have to have a fiscal sponsor, but what we find is that sometimes schools do opt to have one. Organizations may as well. Um, an example of that would be a school applying for a grant and they designate their PTA as a fiscal sponsor. That means that they're designating the PTA to be the recipient of the check. We write the check out to them and that information just has to be captured in the application. And so that is what you see. It's the first person, first section of the application. Um, you just you know follow the prompts here, yes or no. And then it's possible that since y'all are previous recipients that some of your fiscal sponsors will already be in the system and you should be able to find them here. But if not, You'll just go ahead and register them here. It just This is a little system to help you look them up. Um, pretty straightforward, but as always, if there's any questions or uncertainty, you can reach out to us. And then we do ask that you provide contact information specific to the fiscal sponsor. Um, so, you know, this may or may not be different 
or the same as the person who is submitting the application, uh, depending on what entity you're, you're using. If it's your PTA, it may be, um, if it's a completely separate organization, it most likely will not be the same person. And then the grantee. If you have a fiscal sponsor, the grantee will be the fiscal sponsor. If you don't have a fiscal sponsor, the grantee will just be your school or organization that's applying. So this information tells us who to write the check to, where to send the um, package, which we also give you an opportunity to put in a delivery section, delivery info section. Um, but just keeping in mind that, that they should fall in line. If you have a fiscal sponsor, your grantee organization to whom we write the check will be that same entity. And if, it's, if there is no fiscal sponsor, it will be your school or organization. And then the grantee signee down here, this is who is going to be responsible for receiving and signing the grant agreement, which is if you remember Megan noted, or Megan noted in the timeline that the key date was January 30th to accept your grant if awarded. Um, the accepting piece of that is signing the grant agreement. So you will want to make sure that if the grantee signee, uh, whoever you put in that, section, if it's not you, the primary contact on the grant that that person knows to expect it uh, come the end of January. And then they'll get an email that's just an, an electronic signature process for our grant agreement. And that will be your formal acceptance. And then while the majority of the application is um, fields to complete and there's some, some reading material to review, uh, there is a budget piece uh, it looks a little bit different, but it just gives you an opportunity to kind of itemize or build out uh, how you plan to use the $500 monetary supplement that comes with this grant. So you'll go to this tab and you'll you'll get an opportunity to kind of build in, you'll press the plus button and you'll put in each of those items um, and how much you, you think that that will cost. Um, this is gonna be a little bit different than when you did it before because the amount is less. So you may have less items um, but it's the same same concept as, as what you experienced in the previous V grant application. So then contact information. Um, we've shared a couple of times, both our email and website for Whole Kids and for the Because Project. Any of your questions or things you want to discuss related to bee programming and bees and hives and uh, pollinator education, you'll want to direct those questions to the Bee Cause Project at info at thebeecause.org. Um, and then with any technical questions related to Smart Simple, the online system, to the application itself, um, perhaps timeline questions or grant agreement questions, you'll wanna direct those to grants at wholekidsfoundation.org. Um, the Bee Cause are our subject matter experts, if you will, on this Bee Grant, um, both of our B grants and then we, we manage the, the admin on it. So keep that in mind. Of course, if you email one and uh, it's about one thing or you email us and it's about something else, we'll just work with Because and we'll connect you. Uh, so no, no problem there. Um, but generally this is, this is how it works. So now we're going to turn it over, um, try and answer some of y'all's questions that have come through uh, that may be good for everyone to hear the answers to. And then if, if anything comes to you after the webinar, of course, you can uh, send us your questions via email. Megan, you're on mute. There we go. Alrighty, so I also just put a link in the chat if anyone is interested in those back to school resources that we've mentioned throughout this webinar um, that links to a blog post on the Because website that dives, it has a video as well um, with our curriculum specialist Emily just diving into where you can plug and play those resources so that'll help you dive right in. All right, so a couple of questions that came up um, throughout the webinar. Um, is one of the ways that we can spend money um, for purchasing new bees. Absolutely. That is the number one way that this money is normally spent. And then if you spend that money, and like I mentioned, if there's a swarm or you spend those funds on something else, 
that pay it forward program I can't emphasize enough is really a continued way of bringing in funds. We've had several programs with the pay it forward program. What they do is they ask for people to reserve their jar of honey. That way you don't have to order too much or too little. You don't have to worry about that. And again, it's no cost up front, but it is nice to know how much to order. And then that helps you plan out a honey fundraiser in the fall, a honey for my honey and Valentine's Day. Um, I'm also available to collaborate on bee puns if you need that. So yes, you can absolutely spend your grant funds on purchasing new bees. Another question that we got was about using a GoPro camera. So the beekeepers can film their visits and they can educate the students better during COVID. That as well is absolutely an acceptable use of funds. How, for example, you could demonstrate that in your renewal grant application is to demonstrate how you're going to continue that programming past the COVID response. Um, of course, the renewal grant is to help you and meet you where you are right now. So if that is what you need to continue the momentum and the buzz with your B program, then that's what this grant is for. We would love to hear how you're going to use those videos to continue that growth as well. Um, so I think that that's a great way to respond to a lot of the digital learning that we're doing. Um, the Because as well on our YouTube channel has several videos that can really you can use those if you're doing distance learning. We have digital field trips as well and a digital hive. So if you do not have access, we have provided video of the inside of some of our observation hives so that the kiddos can watch that and follow along with some fun activities. Alrighty, so children's bee suits. Um, these can range if you're just looking for a jacket and the hood part, I have one on the floor, but I'm gonna save everyone from that image of putting a bee suit on. But um, those can range, if you're just getting the jacket and the bee hood, that's something that can be around $50. If you're getting an entire bee suit, which again, if you're working with beginners and kiddos, we would recommend, they can range up to 75 to 100. So that's something that again, if you purchase maybe three to start your bee club with, then you can cycle kids out, especially since we're still all social distancing. Kelly beekeeping, I believe, is where those, the most common kiddo bee suits I've found. You can also find them on Amazon. Um, I don't believe Man Lake has them. But I will check that. And if you want to email me directly, I can provide those links as well. Um, covering the cost from membership to local beekeeping organizations. That unfortunately falls outside of the K through 12 spectrum, simply because the, you wouldn't be able to provide necessarily membership for all of the kids. And what I would really do is see if that if that beekeeping membership can be donated. I know our local Charleston area beekeeping association, um, we've worked with them to provide some education, a discount for educators in the area so that they can be a part of the beekeeping classes, whatever they may look like this year. Um, but if it is an adult doing the membership, that would not be included. If there is a beekeeper coming into the classroom and they have a fee associated with their visit or their ongoing maintenance, that is a cost that would be covered under the grant. Let me know if that, if I need to clarify on that. Alrighty. Where the recipient of a bee grant, is that different than the grant you are renewing? Um, Jennifer, you are absolutely, like if you received a B grant through the B cause separately from the Whole Ked Foundation and the B cause joint grant program, um, you are eligible to apply. We just need, if you wanna reach out, we just wanna make sure your contact is in the system and we'll just have to set that up. Stephanie, Stephanie will help us do that. Alrighty, we plan to purchase an observation hive with these funds. The total cost exceeds 500. We have a plan to cover the additional cost. I assume we can show this other funding on the budget. Yes, 
absolutely. So if you're planning to purchase an observation hive elsewhere, um, then just demonstrate how that, how, what your plan is again in your budget, that's really the strong suit of the application is the purpose behind that budget. So that's absolutely fine. Alrighty. Does anyone need me to clarify those answers? I know a lot of it is surrounding that budget. And again, your, the budget for the renewal grant, it has to directly benefit K through 12 students. So whether that's in your school or your nonprofit, those funds just need to be used to, if you have a dormant B program that due to the COVID response or the past couple of years, the program ran dormant for one reason or another and you would like to revive it, that's one scenario that you could use those funds for. Or on the flip side, if you have a just booming B program and you would like to expand it, add some hives, expand into a B club, et cetera, um, that's something that you definitely can use the renewal grant for. So boosting momentum, starting your B program over again. Um, and we did have a question in the chat about how many grants we're awarding this year. We're awarding 100 grants. We do sometimes have additional sponsors pop up to cover additional grants, but right now um, we have the funding for 100. Um, and we really are just looking for that budget and the purpose behind the budget and the intention to make sure that you guys can use these renewal grant funds to really bridge the gap if there is a gap created this year or to continue to grow your program. Another question that we had was the odds and then do you have enough funds to cover most of the pool of grant recipients? Like I just mentioned, um, we have funds to cover 100 grants. If you are eligible and you've demonstrated the need that makes for a strong application. So we're, again, we're really just looking for those programs who want to continue and grow. Whatever your starting point is, we are not judging if you are restarting your program or if you're adding to a burgeoning B program. Alrighty. Jennifer, I saw your comment, so we'll definitely reach out to you um, and get that all figured out. I'm just reading the next question. Megan, before we get too far away, I just wanted to add one piece um, about the question related to how someone might um, offer like additional information in their budget. Mm -hmm. I think the question specifically for this person was they wanted to buy an observation hive and obviously the funds will not cover the full amount. So how do they share with us that? Um, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of text space in the budget like field in the system. So I think my suggestion for that would be if y'all have uh, situations like that or, um, you know, where there's you're buying something where you're going to be getting needing more funds and you want to share that info with us or um, just something else that you want to kind of provide more color as it relates to how you're spending your funds. I think you should probably opt to do that in in maybe like the the program details portion of the application and just, you know, be very clear about what it is that you're trying to explain. Um, I share that because I think that the budget boxes may be, you know, like single lines. So if you had something you wanted to share that was more than that, um, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, I don't have very much space here. So what do I do? Um, and my suggestion would be to just find an appropriate place to put that in, in the other part of the application. Awesome, definitely. And we had another question about one of the specific questions in the application itself. And the question in the application is, please share how your community is involved with your B program, if at all. So if we hearken back to the um, growth, the pyramid of how to grow your B program that we highlighted earlier, one of those steps and building blocks in growing your B program is engaging your community. So when we ask that question, please share how your community is involved with your B program, if at all. That can mean different things depending upon if you're a school or a nonprofit. Either way, 
at the core, what we mean by that question is, is this B program extending beyond your individual classroom? Is it affecting the staff, the administration? Are more people involved at the parent level if it's a school? Are there potential events or outreach considered? Another element to consider is, are you welcoming beekeepers in from your community, whether it's digitally, digital, a digital field trip for a classroom or a local farmer? If you're in an urban or a rural area, there are farmers close by who their best partners are pollinators. That's another way to engage with your community. So what type of programs that you're working with that have to do with your B program are reaching out to your surrounding community. What does that impact look like beyond your individual classroom? Again, it is not, you are not going to be looked at any differently if you have your science lab and there are students who come into that science lab every day or digitally come into the science lab every day, just raring ready to go to look at those bees versus if you have an entire school who has a honey festival every year. We look at those options equally. This is all about engagement. But what we really want to know is if you are going a little bit further to engage with the staff, administration, parents, etc. Let me know if that makes sense. Okay, awesome. Well, we are still here for y'all. This is oh, sorry. This is Tristana. I just um, I wanted to add something to the question about um, you know, what's our pool of applicants, and do we have enough to support everyone? And I just wanted to reiterate that this is our first year doing the renewal grant. We're really excited, and so we don't know what the demand will be. Um, and yeah, so we'll you know that'll kind of help us understand more moving forward. We will share that this grant program is, is only available for those who have received a grant pro, a grant from us in the past, a B grant from us in the past, and we've given out about 500 grants. So that kind of gives you a sense of you know who is eligible to apply. Of course, along with the other eligibility pieces, um, must have submitted progress reports in the annual surveys. So um, just to kind of give you a kind of a more specific kind of picture of what we're looking at, but we're we don't we don't yet know what the demand will be. So we're excited to see. Um, what that looks like. Yes, exactly. And I am putting a link for kiddo bee suits into the chat for that question that was posed earlier. And that link is on Kelly beekeeping. There are the jackets with the hoods and then also just the full, the full bee suit. Those do tend to be a little bit expensive, but the good thing is, is you can throw them into the wash with whatever we need to disinfect and they're pretty hardy. So that's, that's the good news. All right, everyone, do you have any more questions? Okay, one more. Um, this might be for Stephanie and Tristana. Clara already submitted her B grant application, but wanted to include a little bit more information. Is there a way to reopen that so she could bolster a few of the answers? Also, way to have already submitted your application. <laughs> yes, there is a way. Um, let's... If you email grants at Whole Kids Foundation, um, we can just put it back in draft status for you um, from our end and you'll be able to make any changes, um, additions, edits that you want and then you'll just resubmit. When you email us, just make sure you provide the name, your name if you're listed as the primary contact that helps us a lot in, in finding it, um, but then also the name of the organization. It'll be super easy for us to do that for you. Yeah, absolutely. And Clara, I can email you and connect you with that, um, with their email as well, just as a, a second step in case you didn't snag that. Alrighty guys.
Well, that's it for today. Um, everyone, just so that you know, December 2nd, there will be a Q&A webinar very similar to this. So if you're filling out your application, um, these months fly by so fast towards the end of the year. If you have any more questions that you think of before then, please reach out to us. We're here to help. But also that'll be a time to really just resolve any of those remaining issues, any questions you may have. All right, okay. guys. well, I think we're good for today. Thank you for everyone who is attending and Tristana, thanks for asking where everyone was from. It's really exciting to see where everyone's tuning in from. Proves that bees really can educate everyone all over the country, so that's really exciting. All right, everyone, if you think of anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and if you're available, join us for the, the Q&A in December. Everyone have a great day. Have a good day, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.